We at Sojourns have known of Mother Mira for more than 18 years. She is said to be an incarnation of the divine, an avatar, known for keeping complete silence during her two-hour-long darshans. Without a word, she receives people one by one. She touches their heads and then looks deeply into their eyes. It's said she unties knots in one's subtle form and then fills them with healing light. First time I met her, I felt just energy. I just felt strong energy. And now, the same strong energy can be felt by anyone, live over the internet, two times every week, whenever Mother Mira is at her home base in Schomburg, Germany. Find the exact hour in your area and watch her live darshan by going to mothermira.com and be with her in person when she makes periodic visits to San Diego, Cleveland, Holland, Melbourne, Sydney, Denver, and many other cities. And the purpose behind Mother Mira's science and its lessons for others? Um, I guess what I really get is like in terms of spirituality, in order to really progress, you need to kind of stop focusing on like the external. And so in some sense by being in silence that helps you to go inside and kind of be more open to something other than the physical. But I guess for me it's just kind of being in her energy and kind of absorbing or like having her like somehow transmit however it happens, her energy her love, her silence, whatever that is. Who is Mother Mira? Well, she's also God. She's a Divine Mother. So, the way Mother said it is, is quite low-key, actually. I mean, uh, she says that she's here because she has a job from God. After our first visit with Mother Mira in her home in Talheim, Germany, we learned we could call her on the telephone and speak to her through her close companion, Adi Lakshmi. On the phone with Adi Lakshmi and Mother Mira in 1997, I told Mother Mira I was on my way to India to see Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba for the first time, to which Mother Mira immediately replied, He is God. And Mother Mira herself has already heard is described as God. The lessons of knowing one's truest identity are many. Mother Mira tours the world where people love her simplicity. Where she receives people, there are never any religious or spiritual trappings of any kind. No music, no chanting, no prayers, no sounds. Always, it's just a plain, simple room with chairs for her and approximately 200 others. At the end of this video, a few seconds of Mother Mira's closing silent blessing for those who come to see her. This video and other scenes here are reproduced here from YouTube and video interviews here, as well as other scenes from her ashram in Madhnapali, India, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, were recorded by soldiers in 2013. Information about how to see Mother Mira will come later. Welcome to Sojourns. This video was produced in September 2015, and the interviews were recorded in 2013 at Mother Mira's principal ashram in Madhnapali, India. How long have you been I, I would say about quite at the beginning when she came to Germany. I have first met her in April 82. April 82? Yeah. And have you... So before you... Before me, yes. <laughs> and have you continued to follow her a little bit or a lot? How long have you been working at her? No, I'm, I'm actually working with her or near her since uh, 89. You've been working with her since 89? That's a long time. Yeah. What's, yeah. The, what's, the, what's the magnet that draws you to commit your life so totally 
the Mother Mirrors work? Well, I never, it is nothing I ever planned. It all just happened that way. It's just something you, you, you find yourself in suddenly. And you, <laughs> you, the, the, of course, it is a spiritual experience. I got through her the transformations, the transformative experiences. See, I had, like uh, Ranjit was before with Amachi, so I have also some spiritual past I was with, uh, before I was with Mother Mira, and quite a long way while I was with Mother Mira, starting to be with her, I was still with Transcendental Meditation in Marusha Mashogu. Many of us have been raised that yeah. way. I was initiated back in 75. Yeah. yeah, about the same time me too. I was initiated in TM in 73. Okay. And I was a TM teacher when I was about 20 years old. So what caused you to continue to look for more? Because uh, at some point I was, I had experiences with, with meditation, with TM, but uh, at some point I didn't find I was really getting close enough or closer to what I had expected to be, to, to come closer to enlightenment or the divine. And there was some, something I wasn't satisfied and at that time I started searching. So some friend came. At that time you could know about Mother only through personal contact. There were no books, no articles, no pamphlets, nothing. And she was very withdrawn. I had no idea who she was. But she, I knew there was an enlightened woman in Germany somewhere near Koblenz. And I thought, okay, one time I go there and check her out. And it, I happened to know it from two different completely different directions, friends. And at one point I saw her picture actually. And when I saw her picture, it was like one eye was actually starting to come out. <laughs> and the next day, on the next day, there was sudden, I didn't have a car at the time, there was a car and there was a job to do nearby. And I was just joining and I saw her. And that was the first time. Just a couple of questions left. Mother Muir says to the world that she is an avatar. Yes. I have a basic understanding of what that is, but for those who aren't even familiar with the word, yes. how would you describe it? No, I think there, there are many concepts about avatar. Avatar is basically, as you know, a divine descent. That means yes. somebody who comes from God. So normal human beings, they, we are all sort of in an ascending ladder of, of going upwards, evolutionary. So the avatar doesn't really have a karma in that sense that he has to live here to work out his karma, but he is sent by, by God here. So the way Mother says it is, is quite low-key actually. I mean, uh, she says that she's here because she has a job from God. And it's that simple and that big. Yeah. She has a human body, a human personality, and like anybody, but there's always the divine presence behind her and she is always in the knowledge of, of what is said, of the, the divine presence. Wonderful. And when you have darshan with her, I'm sure you've had darshan with her many times. Hundreds and hundreds, thousands of times. I don't know about hundreds of thousands, but many times. When she looks into your eyes, <laughs> what is it that you feel? Well, it is. It is. It may be. It may vary greatly, but but I, I do feel the light, and I do feel the 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 chakras opening up. And, and, uh, and for somebody who wants to be able to have the experience that you have, yeah. but actually be around her where she talks, because I understand when you come and volunteer time here yeah. in her ashram in Madhama Pali, yeah. India, yes. in Andhra Pradesh, she does speak yeah. to people. Yes. Would you say a word or two about welcoming people to think about coming here for yes. a week or two to donate time? Yes. Well, I mean, actually, we prefer to have people here coming longer because we have school. And it is not good for the school if the teachers or the volunteers actually change a lot. So they, they, uh, it would be good if somebody volunteers, let's say, a few weeks or a month or actually more than, than a month. And uh, then also it is like uh, Ranjit says, sometimes she's here, sometimes she's not here. So the idea is you can, you have a, an amazing opportunity, much more open than ever before, to actually work with her. But that shouldn't be the first motivation. The first motivation should be to serve, to, to serve her and not to, you know, hang around in her presence all the time.
True seva, in other words. Yes. True giving. Yes. Selfless work of and the heart. And you, you be here in her energy field and, you know, uh, will be guided by her. Are you from Columbus? I was born in Chennai, but I grew up in Ohio. Or, not, yeah, grew up in the U.S., I guess. Okay. And what did you do in Ohio? Um, right now? Yeah. Um, I finished uh, graduate school, and then after that I started um, focusing on spirituality. So. Well, this is very interesting because uh, this is the first case in my history of almost 50 years as a journalist that I've come across a holy person whom I cannot answer a question because she's in silence. Uh, and I've known Adivakshmi not as long as this gentleman, but for many years. Uh, and she won't allow anybody to be interviewed but the two of you here because it's just a policy. But she's right. given the blessings for you to be interviewed. So tell me what drew you to Mother Mira and what the experience is like being here at her ashram in Madanapali, India. Um, actually, I feel like I was... Um drawn to Amuchi before, and I was actually kind of going on the tour, I was following her on the tour in the U.S., mm -hmm. and it was actually one of her devotees that um, wanted to see Mother Mira, and so actually I was giving her a ride, and so I said, okay, so I'll also go with you to see Mother Mira. So that was the initial kind of thing that pulled me. So in some sense, I almost feel like it was uh, Amuchi that kind of um, pushed me in this direction toward Mother Mira. Okay. And. And it was actually like before I even saw her, like I was just gonna go register for the uh, darshan because you have to actually register online. And just by reading the web page, I was reading about her, and then all of a sudden I realized at the end that it wasn't someone's description of Mother Mira. It was actually like Mother Mira's own words of like her like philosophy. And somehow when I had that realization that I was reading her words and it was just her itself. That just really hit me really hard, and I just started crying, just like just as I was reading it. And so I was like, "Yeah, this is a, a good decision to go." Because with Amachi, um, people are a little bit careful about in terms of seeing other gurus. So in that sense, that was still a little bit on my mind. But I felt like with this with this experience, I had a strong feeling that I should go and see her. And so that's kind of what started the whole thing. And what and was so, your first reaction when you came here? to Madanapali, India, and you found her ashram, which is a school, a service center. It's a charity on several levels. How did that first impress you? Um, for me, I was really, like I was interested in meditation, and so I was really drawn to her being in silence, and I was drawn to the darshan. So initially, I just came for a darshan, and that's really what kind of brought me here. And then eventually it turned out, because I was thinking that with my skills, I didn't really have that much to contribute because I wasn't really like someone who did construction or I wasn't really a teacher or anything like that. But it was like after being here for a while, it turned out that they did need someone who needed help or they needed some help with teaching the computer classes and stuff like that. So then all of a sudden, like it turned out my skills could help. But initially I wasn't thinking that I would be doing much because I didn't see it. Then. And I try to explain to people what her darshan is like because it takes all of less than a minute, 35, 40 seconds. She puts her hands on your head and then you look into her eyes. What's that all about? I, I know myself, but I'd like to hear it from your lips what the significance is of that for the followers. Um, I mean, I guess, like, I would say it's probably different for different people, but I guess for me, it's just kind of being in her energy and kind of absorbing or like having her like somehow transmit however it happens, her energy, her love, her silence, whatever that is. She's a divine mother. So there are two aspects of God, the, the male and the divine, there's a female side. So one is the Shakti, as you know in India you have this beautiful distinction between uh, the being and the becoming, so the, the Shakti and the Shiva. So the female side is for the, for the transformation, it's very important because it is uh, the power of God. Tell me about what your life would be like if you hadn't come across their mirror in your life. Mm. Well, that is of course impossible to say because it is so, it is now I know her 30 years, so <laughs> to, <laughs> even if you hadn't met her, you wouldn't be able to say uh, what your life would be if it would have been in another direction. But I can say that, that at certain times, in, in a successive way, she has really transformed my life's experience. And I cannot imagine even how it was before. And for the next 30 years of your life, what do you plan to do? <laughs> I cannot say, you know, I haven't been planning to be with her that long. 
so I cannot say <laughs> how it will be in future. Here, when you came to her ashram, I, I see that there's various locations in Madhnapalli. This is the one of the school. We can hear the children scampering about in the background right now. I think there's about four or five hundred children in your schools now. Uh, do they pay for it? Is it an education where there's a lot of teachers? Is this a service that she provided just recently? Tell me what you know. And maybe, I know you don't know everything yet. Sure. Tell me what you know about her love for these children. Um, I think she just started a few years ago and it's just a regular school that people pay fees for and then that takes care of the teachers and so it kind of runs by itself without having to you know, focus on always getting donations. So it's just like a regular school where she tries to like I guess you could say bring a little bit more spirituality where they do like chanting and of course she's her energy is here as well. And is there anything else you'd like to say in conclusion if it's from your head or if it's from your heart it's okay about why you still feel that she is a gift to you as a teacher, as a guide, as an avatar who is here to help you, your soul, advance spiritually. To help you advance into your soul spiritually might be a better way to put it. Um, I mean, I guess I feel like being here in some sense, I always try to interpret everything that happens here as something that's good for me, as in it's something, even if it's negative, it's something that it's for me to work on or to show me about myself. And so in that sense, I feel like that's kind of what helps me to kind of um, enjoy being here. Because I think for some people it is kind of tough, and it, and it is tough for me at times also. It really works on your ego, but I feel like as long as you can keep that perspective that this is all for your benefit, then I feel like that really helps me. So I feel like when I can see everything here as being from her, then that's really kind of like amazing. amazing and, and would you necessarily extend a welcome mat and open arm invitation for people to come from wherever they might be seeing this? around the world, uh, even though it's not an easy place to find and it's not an easy trip to get here from anywhere outside of this part of India. No, definitely. I mean, um, if you definitely want to um, focus more on spiritual growth, I think definitely coming here is just an amazing blessing to spend as much time as you can here. And one man's understanding of what happens specifically in Mother Mira's presence? No, I mean, uh, it has to do with, uh, with the opening of, of the chakras. And, and so I, I feel that uh, she did something to to the ver to, to the top chakras. Let's say it like this: to the main top chakras, which I felt was irreversible in a way. So and, and does that happen when she's touching you on your head mostly? Actually, or there was there was one moment when uh, this is was after I came back from my first time in India, not meeting her, but being with Maharishi, and I still had a lot of med meditations in, in that ashram too. But actually, one time she she touched my head right right with her thumbs on the top, oh. and after that moment, I had it. It sounds strange, I know it sounds very strange, but I had a kind of a strange uh, sensation that of a sort of an egg-like shape here <laughs> on the top and of it your could, head. And it could could be hurting too. It could be you know. Yeah, and then something opens there. It, it, yeah, it took me some meditations and coming back to her. And then it became sort of like more fluid or transparent. And uh, at some point it expanded into a space above the head. And at some point it, it you know, it became con more continuous. It's, and then it took another ma two, three months of maybe half a year until I felt there was a, a, such a deep inner connection that, you know, wouldn't go away anymore. It was really on a, on a soul level. So have you learned some technique of meditation? Before with I was her? in the gym. After you came to her? She doesn't teach meditation techniques, so I, uh, when I left TM finally, and after maybe six or seven years, and I decided to, to stay with her, I, I uh, used her, her name as a mantra instead. Of, uh, so, so you do Japan with her? With her name, but I've changed it too. I mean, it's, it's more spontaneous. I can't even pinpoint the finger of what I exactly do because it's, it's guided somehow. It's, it's something which goes on by itself. So it's, uh, I'm very lucky to have been spending a lot of time of my life in meditation. It just goes on and it's on. Very good. Thank you. Michael, Ranjit. <laughs> Thank you both very, very much. This has been most enlightening, and we've all come to know a little bit more our yeah. beloved Mother Mary. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Too. Nice to meet you, too.
Mother Mira travels often, and you can find out when she might be coming to a city near you by going to her website, mothermira.com. There is never any charge for her darshans, and donations are never asked for. There are a number of excellent books brought forth by Mother Mira and her secretary, Nadi Lakshmi, all of which can be found online. What follows, just some of the many helpful thoughts and ideas expressed by Mother Mira for the spiritual upliftment of others. The Divine never says that suffering is necessary. This idea is created by human beings. The Divine asks us to be happy, harmonious, and peaceful. The Avatar has the power to change anyone and to alter any karma. Everything, good and bad, is God. And the old separations between holy and worldly are not real. Everything is divine. Everything. When people have a silent mind, they will receive more. Ask. Ask for everything. Like a child asks its mother for everything without shame. Do not stop at peace of mind, or even purity of heart, or surrender. Demand everything. One must love the world and its people, not feel repulsion for them. There is nothing wrong with the world. The divine is everywhere. The best way to be near me is to remember me. If you need my help, I will help you. This help does not depend on any condition. And finally, Mother Mirror's most humble blessing, always conducted at the end of each darshan for the upliftment of all. Sort of. I have translated it as sanctuary. Sanctuary. That's yeah, a very good word. I'm, I'm not sure. Sharana means uh, shelter, refuge. Okay. 